hello everybody. So um, let me share with you the, uh, the results of this uh, B2B Marketplaces Observatory, which we decided to create uh, last year with our friends of uh, Web Health Payment Services and of Miracle, uh, witnessing uh, a first, I would say, spring of uh, B2B marketplaces and having a great desire to see how this spring was, uh, was developing over time. And also trying to understand what are the levers behind it and how can uh, our friends in uh, Europe be able to build uh, successful businesses that, are w that will be able to, uh, to counter potential uh, threats coming either from the West or from the East. Uh, so to start with, we, we have reconducted this year uh, say a, campaign of, a campaign of interviews on all those sectors on which marketplaces are really pouring currently. Notably on services, which is rather new, because services are a little harder to, uh, to, to, uh, to determine in terms of, in terms of products, uh, harder than products for sure. But also, of course, in terms of automobile spare parts, of uh, IT supplies, food, notably the easy food, um, factory supplies, uh, medical supplies as well, uh, fashion, uh, hospital supplies, and also agricultural supplies. What is pretty amazing is to see that if uh, marketplaces have obviously started with uh, uh, non-strategic purchases, uh, so namely, uh, uh, namely. Um, um, uh, so, um, uh, office supplies, uh, and also if they, uh, this is the way, the easy way I would say that Amazon is always starting uh, uh, on a given market, it is absolutely evident that uh, the, uh, that, the, uh, that the phenomenon is spreading all over, all, all over the, various, uh, the various sectors. One of our questions was, uh, well, do we see uh, a, a certain development in terms of landscape, some evolutions? What are the challenges th that we see that our friends, and notably typically you in this room, are facing by developing those marketplaces? And also, how do we see evol uh, them evolving over, uh, over the few years? The first, I would say, uh, main observation is that, uh, well, we were hoping, we were thinking that we would suddenly jump uh, from, from spring to summer. Uh, that um, all those seeds that we have seen, uh, it, uh, interestingly enough, they were below the level of water. So we knew that many people were preparing things, they were planting seeds into the, oil, into the earth, and that uh, those things were going to, uh, uh, to bloom. We were thinking that some kind of a summer would suddenly arrive. The first, I think, uh, uh, observation is that we are currently passing uh, on a gradual uh, say development from, sling to, uh, from, from spring to blossom. That's the way we. Uh, that's that's why we call it the blossom of B two B marketplaces. We see uh, all those uh, seeds that have been planted that are slowly blossoming currently. Uh, 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 we see some new some new ones that are still being planted into the earth, and we still think that probably in the coming eighteen months it will still be time to do so. After a certain time, it will be too hot. We will really be into the summer, so it will not not be time anymore to plant any seeds. I think, and. Um, and what is notably uh, pretty amazing is, I would say, the first thing, which is the rat race. I deeply think that the, we are currently witnessing a rat race between, uh, on the one hand, the pure players coming either from the west or from the east that have uh, accelerated suddenly their growth. And what I think is interesting is that we see the respective market, places, uh, market shares of pure, pure players versus click and mortar players being very different in uh, the US, uh, in China, and in Europe. In the US, in reality, the service level was not that high, and uh, especially in B2C, but also in B2B, which is why uh, it has been such a land of, uh, of, of paradise uh, for Amazon to grow. In China, uh, in reality, uh, uh, there has been uh, a necessity to cope with the demanding necessity to uh, increase capacities extremely suddenly, which is why pure players have been able to take a leadership. But we think the, uh, the, uh, the landing of marketplaces and, and of market shares between those two continents and Europe uh, is not the same. Because in Europe, uh, there is a specificity which is, uh, on the one hand, the complexity, but also the presence of very strong legacy players that have given, historically, a pretty high level of service to their clients. Which is why we, ha we are witnessing this rat race, because in some categories, it is already happening, and we are seeing the, the, the uh, I would say, the pure players, uh, uh, I would say, fighting against the, uh, the legacy players. In some other ones, uh, legacy players still have a few trimesters to increase uh, the level of service, uh, to uh, launch more transparent, uh, I would say, marketplace system. 
potentially, let's be honest, to uh, cannibalize oneself uh, with a business model that might not be as uh, juicy as uh, historical markets uh, business models have been, but still to have a certain time in order to do that phenomenon, to do that move, and to avoid being cannibalized by somebody else. And so I think this rat race phenomenon is very interesting. We'll certainly discuss maybe in the same room in two years' time. We'll see what, ha what comes out of it. But my bet is that uh, Europe is, if certainly uh, China and Asia is, are the places where uh, pure players have invented a new model, Europe is certainly the place where legacy players will invent the click and mortar model. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure of that. This is going to happen here. Uh, of course, uh, that being said, we see that the pure players are becoming increasingly dangerous. It's amazing to see how big uh, they have been. And also now, especially in the, for the case of Alibaba, uh, uh, profitable. Uh, and so uh, we are taking this, uh, this uh, threat very seriously. Second phenomenon is we see multiplication of marketplaces initiatives in, across all segments. Obviously, some segments uh, will be a better uh, land uh, than some other ones, notably those with products that have a, a, a smaller level of, of, uh, of rotation, uh, uh, whose uh, uh, logistic is more scarce, uh, thus on which it is uh, harder for a legacy player to have already a one implanted and already uh, extremely competitive business model, notably in terms of supply, of delivery. Because uh, look at the figures of Amazon, uh, how costly the lo logistic is. It's just amazing. Huh? It is today a very luxurious, uh, very highly uh, uh, service-oriented, also very costly logistic, also extremely co uh, competitive, we know. But once uh, having to compete uh, with the complexity of, uh, of, of, of B2B, of B2B uh, segments, uh, uh, of course, such a level uh, cannot, uh, cannot cope. Uh, the third observation, that's pretty new, is the fact that marketplace initiator can be all in the value chain. Obviously, we, we first see, uh, we first see uh, pure players, then we see uh, wholesalers that either develop a new marketplace or cannibalize themselves by their marketplace, so middlemen. Interesting enough, we have seen also uh, industrial uh, players, so manufacturers, being able to uh, uh, to develop their own marketplace, we call them market, uh, industrial-led marketplaces, or uh, a w another way, a new distribution channel, which is obviously a threat for, uh, uh, for middlemen. But now we also see that the buyers on the other side, on the other side of the value chain, are also able to launch their own marketplaces. I would say that both, uh, on the, both manufacturers and buyers are today uh, have the desire, show the desire to uh, to capture part of the value added that has been historically captured by by middlemen. Thus, um, they, they see they see it as a as an opportunity. Time will tell. Time will tell because obviously for uh, very uh, fragmented uh, uh, client base, uh, manufacturers will face some difficulties. But they will be smart enough in order to relaunch the, 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 the flow to their, to their suppliers, so that, uh, to, 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 their, to their distributors, so that they keep a certain, uh, I would say, uh, direct client contact and still don't have to, uh, don't have to carry the heavy, uh, the heavy fixed cost. So, uh, and regarding the buyers, uh, it will also uh, allow them to, uh, to, I would say, to increase their power of negotiation. Uh, Next to product marketplaces, that have been the first ones that uh, they have witnessed. Now we also see uh, services marketplaces. We have seen them historically in the world of transportation because transport can be very easily measured. Uh, but now we see them also, and I would say, in uh, in uh, business services uh, 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 business services offerings. We also see that getting the technology right and notably the payment remains a challenge. Of course, we are very happy, happy to see our, our friends from, uh, from WebHelp uh, here that help their clients on that. It is not that easy in the world of B2B. They need to be very inventive, those guys are, uh, because the, uh, the schemes uh, of payments, uh, notably the tariffs, are pretty much more complex. And this is, I would say, still one of the either obstacle or uh, factors of success, because those who will be able to overcome those obstacles will certainly be much ahead of the other ones. And, uh, and last point, I think, Interesting uh, also, marketplaces and e-procurement are, are, are slowly but surely moving, moving one to, uh, to another. So far, it has been a completely opposite system. E-procurement is closed, e-procurement is working in one given big industry, I would say 
uh, client. Uh, e procurement is used by people within this uh, this uh, this company in order to procure things. Whereas marketplaces and e procurement is also meant to be able to uh, to measure and monitor volumes. Whereas marketplaces is opened is meant to maximize volumes is meant to uh, maximize the number of, of buyers and number of vendors. That being said, they uh, they currently tend to uh, to, to merge uh, to merge together at the expense of punch-out catalogs, uh, which we will see also. So maybe uh, a, a, a little more details on, on all those points. Uh, first, it's true that B2B e-commerce so far is still a very Asian phenomenon. Obviously, Asia does not uh, weight 80% of the, of the world GDP, not at all, but they do weight 80% of, uh, of B2B marketplaces. So this is uh, the place in the world where this phenomenon is being invented so far. That being said, as I said, it is by and large, a pure, uh, a pure, a pure play system. Uh, we see that uh, the other continents are, are, are catching back. Uh, we see that the overall growth is, is extremely big. Also, the figures are already extremely big. Obviously, the value added is not that big because they only take a few percentage of that uh, growth volume as a, as a, as a, as a margin. Uh, but that's, uh, that's the situation as of today. We see, I would say, a, 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 a pursued development of those figures in the coming three years. Second thing is, uh, we do have uh, geographical differences, but also very strong differences per category of products. We, do, we still have products such as, uh, such as uh, food, which is are extremely uh, uh, um, low penetrated uh, by, uh, by B2B e-commerce. Uh, for various reasons. On the one hand is the complexity of the product catalogs. It's also the fact that uh, the logistic cost is, 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 pretty, is pretty big. Thus, legacy players have worked a lot in the past in order to optimize it. And today have extremely efficient systems, notably in terms of full, uh, of full truck loads, that are not so easy to beat uh, by, uh, by, by new entrants. Whereas I would say on the other side of the of the uh, 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 of the uh, of the matrix, we see typically uh, office supplies, uh, where uh, we will soon uh, reach the 50% uh, threshold and certainly overtake it as it has already been overtaken on travel and, sport and transportation. And we see some, I would say, in all kinds of intermediate solutions, be it industrial supplies, medical supplies, which interestingly enough grow very highly, also automotive spare parts, with the difference between, I would say, more massive products such as tires, oil, etc., and uh, uh, more special products such as the rest of the spare parts, and also uh, equipment and construction supplies which are smaller. What they all have in common, though, is that the percentage is growing, and that uh, within this percentage, uh, we have a part of marketplaces which is also uh, not negligible now. And we also see the Kegers below, which are in most cases two digit, and in some cases even uh, be, uh, be beyond 20% growth. Another point I think is interesting it's the two, uh, the two, mega, the two mega leaders. The two mega leaders. Uh, Okay, have, have, have uh, today, uh, I would say, turnovers of uh, respectively 40 billion and uh, nearly 180 billion. So uh, these are uh, absolutely uh, massive figures. But in reality, those figures uh, hide much bigger figures. In the case of Alibaba, as it is a pure marketplace model, it, has a, it, 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 it hides a figure which is uh, near to 1,000 billion of uh, gross uh, volume, on which they only take, as you can read, 5% on average. Uh, but that 5%, as you can read also, uh, generates an EBDA of 28%. So in reality, even though the 5% is honestly very small, and I can suppose that most of you guys, if you work uh, within wholesaling companies, uh, would take certainly five times this figure. That being said, uh, having 28% EBDA is just amazing. Uh, this is typically what I was meaning by saying cannibalizing oneself. You're more or less switching one business which generates maybe a 20-25% gross margin by another business which is only generating, as we see, 5% gross margin. But within this 5%, it is obscenely, uh, obscenely profitable. Uh, we see Amazon, uh, which on the one hand has, uh, seems to have four times bigger figures in terms of turnover, but in reality, in terms of gross volume, it's, uh, it's three times smaller. Uh, it's three times smaller, and it's also a mix of, of retail and marketplace. Amazon has, I would say, come to the marketplace pretty, pretty, pretty fast. That being said, uh, is not, cannot be considered as a pure marketplace player. Uh, but what it has also done, it has uh, entered the B2B uh, arena 
uh, namely in the US in 2015, in Germany in 2016, uh, in France in February 2018. If you look at whatever Amazon is doing, they're, all, they're, they're, they're starting everything in the US, then they go to, uh, to Germany uh, and also Japan, and then they go to, uh, to, to UK and then only France. So I don't know how many French people are in this room, but interestingly enough, uh, whatever could happen in our country, we can witness it first in, uh, in three, at least three countries before, so we have a little bit of time to prepare ourselves. That's, that's something good. The reason is, in reality, not so glorious. The reason is they do not consider our country as being that attractive compared to the other ones which I mentioned. That's, that's, the, that's the reason behind it. Uh, in one year, in 2016, they already generated 1 billion euro of uh, gross volume, 1 billion, so it's not, not a ridiculous figure. And this figure is currently uh, growing at a very high pace. We also see here, and we'll, we, you have all the details in the paper I left you, uh, the, uh, the percentage of growth. Uh, you see for the marketplace, it's absolutely massive. Uh, it's above 40%. And for the retail in general, it's 20%. So it's, it's, uh, it's really amazing. Also, something which you all see here, which is very frightening, is that uh, all the, uh, the profit comes from the cloud business. In other words, the, uh, the retail business and also the marketplace business is, is loss-making, uh, which we more or less know. We all have that in our mind, but once, w once we see it on a paper, it's even more frightening because uh, it, it means that the business is being sponsorized by, uh, by an adjacent business, which obviously makes it a, a dangerous uh, competitor. Uh, what are the archetypes of strategies uh, that the legacy players can use in order to strike back uh, against those two big guys whose name begin with an A? Um, well, we've seen uh, last year uh, four archetypes of strategies, uh, and amusingly enough, they slightly evolved, and I will now describe uh, the ones as we see them today. The first one regards uh, the one-stop shop strategy. We, I used to call them long tail growth. On the one hand, it is an, a horizontal development of the product categories in order to, uh, to serve a higher level on the one hand of vendors, but also of buyers, of clients. And also the defensive one-stop shop, which allows to provide to one given client everything he or she needs, not only in terms of products, but also in terms of supplies and services. Today, increasingly, those two strategies are hard to, to, to uh, I would say, to, uh, to shift, to, to separate one from another. I very often think that some people I talk to, in reality, have only a long tail growth strategy, but all of them are absolutely persuaded that they have a one-stop shop strategy. So, but I, let me please remind you that this does include a vertical, also, diversification outside your, uh, 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 your, your, uh, your um, frequent uh, uh, pr uh, categories of products in order to be a real one-stop shop. And I do think that this will be a winning strategy in order to, uh, to raise barriers against the, uh, against the giants. The distribution channel extension is what I called uh, by mentioning uh, things which are being launched by manufacturers. Business model transformation, uh, we use, uh, uh, I think, uh, a detailed uh, um, um, graphic in order to show it to you because it's interesting. It's where you can create a market when there is no market, more or less. And finally, procurement network is rather new. It's exactly what I was meaning by seeing those um, um, marketplaces which are being launched by clients, by, by, by buyers. So that's my first, I would say, output, is that today we can see, if I'm being very, uh, very uh, caricatural, producers, distributors, or service providers, middlemen, and B2B clients, um, we can see one-stop shops. That, uh, that are here, and we see the initiator that decides to uh, increase his, uh, his power on the market. We can sue manufacturers. Business model transformation, it's obviously people in the between who are allowing, you see the arrows, they go into those both different directions, uh, allow uh, both uh, sides of the medal to talk, even though they were not talking so far. We will see uh, which kind of applications. And last but not least, procurement network are being initiated by, by clients themselves. So maybe uh, one second on each, uh, one-stop shop. They aim to, uh, to grow the business by expanding products and services, offering vertically and horizontally to attract new customers. So we see, I would say, the historic situation before Marketplace arrives with the existing products, product categories, uh, clients, logistic, which is being either out in source or outsourced, but it doesn't really care in this case and the distributor who also becomes an initiator of the marketplace. And then we see that this person is first expanding horizontally with the long tail, notably on low uh, rotation items, uh, I would say uh, notably um, seasonal items, 
maybe in the, kind, in the case of food, for example, festive items, regional items, all those items that are not worth being uh, put into, into a stock. Uh, it's likely also, by the way, between you and me, that uh, offering such uh, an easiness of purchasing of such bizarre items will probably expand their, uh, the size of the C rotation items within the whole business at the expense of the B rotation items. That's my guess. But uh, for sure, uh, that's the first goal, which is horizontal. But also vertical, that means thinking that when you sell either to a garage or to a restaurant or to a craftsman, or whatever, anyway, I would say to a profession, whichever profession, those people whom you sell to are not only clients of uh, core products, of uh, really uh, raw materials or, let's say, uh, strategic products which you sell to them, but they're also companies. A company needs also accounting. A company needs also uh, temporary work. They need uh, advice. Um, they need uh, specialized services. And um, what I think interesting in so many interviews I made, and of course I will not be uh, allowed to disclose any details, but is that I've bound into some cases of people who've been inventive enough to imagine what very specialized services a given profession could, could buy, and that makes this more or less impossible for a giant whose name begins with an A to, uh, uh, to develop such services on all verticals and in all countries. So that for sure will become a strong barrier. That opens, on the one hand, I think new clients, notably uh, through the, the long tail growth, because it's, I would say, more rare clients, clients whose needs are not so frequent. Uh, so they would not have considered you as a supplier, but now that you have your marketplace, they do. And uh, whereas the vertical integration, I think, does not really open new clients, it's different, it secures existing clients. It's not, not, not the same thing. So probably doing the two in parallel is, is smart, uh, even though it's not exactly the same uh, direction. Distribution channel extension uh, marketplaces integrate a new and complementary distribution channel into the existing network. We have seen that notably with producers whose name, whose brand, is so famous that in reality they address the whole world. Typically, in IT supplies, names are really famous. I mean, it's usually one factory somewhere in China with one given either Korean or American or Chinese producer who serves the world and who serves millions of clients. So on the one hand, they have no other choice than being very massive in terms of industry. But on the other hand, as they serve the world, it's more or less impossible for them to escape from having distributors. And uh, what uh, very smart thing they can do is to, to, to turn their historic dealer locator internet sites into a marketplace. That marketplace allows to offer to clients a complete, uh, a complete um, I would say, um, experience. Let's take the, the, the case which is very well known of uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE, I think it's probably one of the most known uh, uh, marketplaces which follows its, this strategy and as it is very public we can we can talk about it. Uh, well, it's very smart because it addresses directly the clients. Clients now become the clients of the manufacturer. Uh, but obviously, uh, the manufacturer doesn't want to, uh, to fully uh, betray his distributors, so he, he, he pushes uh, the volumes to his, to his uh, distributors. By doing so, he offers to the distributor an internet strategy, fantastic. He uh, escapes from having to, uh, to build his own uh, uh, supply chain uh, capacities, which would be very costly, but he gets the, uh, the information and the direct client link. The speech is very nice. Uh, dear Mr. Distributor, I'm, I'm building your own internet strategy. You don't have to build it. Believe me, I'm so nice. Uh, and uh, and uh, all that is for free. Uh, so um, you just put your products on my uh, platform and you will sell them to clients and I will never uh, compete against you with, uh, with, my, with any supply chain capacities. Okay, interesting. Uh, distributors in some cases want to fight back, but they're not, it's not that easy because uh, uh, none of them has a, has, a, has a name who's as famous as the names of those manufacturers. So in whichever industry where uh, needs are not so frequent, are on very, uh, uh, very, um, I would say, massive items. Uh, those items are very iconic, with very strong brands, 
Uh, that could be typically the case in uh, some electrical supplies uh, s uh, components, I think, or in, uh, in IT, also in, in agro uh, equipment. We see very long uh, value chain with distributors, with installers, etc. And so those people, in, the end, in, most of, in most of the cases, are fragmented. They address the land, they address the field, it's true, they address the client, but they could very easily become, at some point, the installers or the manufacturers, and not anymore really selling things to their clients. So that's the uh, manufacturer-led marketplaces. Business model transformation is completely different. It's still a marketplace, though. They allow the fluidity of the match of demand and supply in an unstructured market when there is no fluidity. So in that case, uh, you have uh, distributors that uh, try to give a fluidity between two very fragmented markets. I would say the, the, the most obvious uh, example, which is as, as old as, uh, as humanity, is, uh, is a real estate, uh, real estate middleman. Okay. Uh, the offer and the demand is massively fragmented. You need to have independent players in between who offer, who offer, uh, who offer uh, uh, an exchange platform. But obviously, uh, using, uh, using the, uh, the digital uh, uh, tools allows to enlarge uh, this philosophy to many other segments, notably to uh, asset sharing, notably to, uh, uh, to, people, uh, to people sharing, uh, notably to uh, uh, proposing, uh, uh, proposing um, um, some, skills, uh, some skills which are very rare to a very scattered, uh, scattered um, land of clients. Also on, on those products which uh, are a little scarce. If you take, for example, one example which was given last year, I think was very interesting, was uh, uh, such a platform that has been created in the world of, 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 uh, of, um, of fishermen. Uh, you have uh, a variety, an immense variety of fishing. You have an immense variety of restaurants that uh, propose to us very, uh, very nice uh, uh, products, very, very nice uh, fish, uh, but it's not that easy for such a fragmented producer base and such a fragmented client base to be in contact one with another. This, this, allows, this allows that to happen. It also allows it, as I said, on, on asset sharing. And this is, I would say, the paradise for, uh, for completely new uh, types of players. This is the world of startups. In many cases, you see startups in, on that strategy, huh? oh, in the world of agro, uh, notably. And uh, maybe the last one regards procurement networks. They provide members with an access to a price attractive offer. So in that case, uh, we have, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, uh, once again, uh, a, a fragmented base of, of both. Uh, on the one hand, I would call, the, I, I call them members because in some cases they are they adhere to a given, uh, to a given franchiser of be, be either hotel chain or uh, whatever, uh, and potential manufacturers. Uh, and you see here an initiator, which interestingly enough, as you can read on this uh, graph, is either within the, uh, the organization here, or can be also independent, which is why I've put it in the middle, and uh, who is aggregating uh, the needs of the members in order to, uh, to address the, uh, the, uh, the, supp the, the, the supplier base. This is... Um, I would say uh, today uh, cannibalizing either uh, the uh, the either the um, the purchasing functions, uh, cannibalizing uh, uh, wholesalers that are still that still exist in those worlds. Uh, also is 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 also uh, challenging. I think the concept of integrated company, because when you have an integrated company of um, yeah, hotels, for example, that provides, uh, that provides scale effect on purchases. If this system can also provide scale effect, well, it might be less costly than having an integrated company. And so I think that maybe beyond marketplaces, we see that uh, the potential impact on the structure itself of, uh, of companies will, will, is, probably not, is probably not negligible. Uh, all those uh, players, of course, uh, do not have an easy, an easy life. Huh? They face challenges. They, face, they all face first technology challenges. 
in terms of uh, seamless integration, notably within their legacy IT, which is not an easy thing. Uh, adaptation of purchasing experience from B2C. Today, people are extremely demanding because as B2C clients, they know what, uh, what they could ask for. Uh, and they expect that in the world of B2B. They don't uh, anymore accept uh, something as old as an, uh, as an e-procurement system. Uh, compliance with legal requirements and degree of price transparency, which is maybe one of the biggest uh, challenge uh, regarding tariffs. Payment, this leads me to payment services, uh, compliance, uh, distinct, uh, uh, distinct payment methods, uh, payment terms that can be asynchronous, invoice management. That's probably uh, one of the biggest challenge, which has to be overcome by you guys uh, in the coming months. Change management, because when I said cannibalizing your, uh, oneself, it's more easy to say than to do, because it's not, an, it's not a comfortable moment. Uh, and so this needs, obviously, to have a very senior management buy-in, which is uh, also why we, we, we try to show how dangerous the big guys can be. Uh, new competences required. Well, we're not talking anymore about buyers, but about vendor managers. Uh, not so much about uh, uh, delivery managers, but uh, supply chain directors. And so it's not exactly the same competencies. You don't really select the products anymore, you select the vendors. Uh, you select the products if you want to stock them, obviously. But, um, but the, the concept of, of marketing of the offer is not the same. And so the competencies are, 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 are evolving. And obviously, digital maturity of the sellers. Uh, I think we are still in the, in the moment where we evangelize uh, the concept uh, in a lot of verticals. And we hope that uh, this can be done uh, before uh, the competitors coming from abroad uh, start to come and to uh, eat the businesses. Maybe one last point regarding uh, e-procurement and marketplaces. The, as I said, they, were, they are currently moving closer together at the expense of punch-out catalogs. So you see here the, the, A, uh, the A items with a very high uh, rotation. I think they will remain A items anyway. They are the core items, and they are being uh, e-procured in, ma in, 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 many, in, many, in many cases. You see the marketplace, which by essence is being uh, I would say used for uh, low rotation items. That's the start of it, really, and uh, and a very vast uh, variety of both uh, upstream and downstream. And so they are obviously on the C class. And the punch-out catalogs are, are those systems which automatically put you from an e-procurement to the catalog of, of given vendors. That, of course, is currently being challenged by the fact that marketplaces integrate themselves into the e-procurement systems, or at least have the possibility to do so. And probably also, as I said, those products, uh, unless the complete business grows, which might not be the case, uh, those products will probably decrease uh, to the benefit of the C, of the C ones. Because um, historically, the, uh, the people doing marketing of the offering were doing a choice. And that choice was, was more or less to, to put a limit between B and C and to, uh, and to, to put a limit between by what, be, what is being stocked and, and offered from one day to another and what is not. And what can be uh, uh, taken in a, in a factory with a long, with a long lead time. Uh, as long as this, uh, this limit changes, it's likely that also that on the long run, we might have a items with extremely optimized um, uh, supply chain systems, and C items that that will go from yeah that will merge the two the, the, the two other uh, categories, and um, and that uh, people will find extremely convenient to purchase. Uh, so you have more details on the uh, on the papers we left on your chase, and I thank you for your attention.